All right, so a reminder of the five figure summary. Um, so the five figure summary lists some of the things we've already looked at. So it's a listing of following significant things um, and in order. So it is the minimum value. The first quarter, Q1, it's the median, which is also Q2, Q3, and the maximum value. Five figure summary then is very closely linked to the box plot. So, box plot, box and whisker. Um, sometimes they're called box and whisker. And so, the box plot is just a graphical representation of these particular things. So it's just a graphical representation um, of the five-figure summary. So um, you would have a number line with some things marked on the number line. You would then the box plot itself look something like this. And then mark on your well on your number line. I'm going to mark it on the number line. You'd have a scale, of course, but what I'm going to put is what these things are. So this end here would be your minimum. Um, this front edge of your box is the first quartile, Q1. The line in the middle of the box is your median, or Q2. Back end of the box is third quartile, Q3. Or upper quartile, and then the other end of your whisker is the um, the maximum. Now, for each of these sections that we've got here represents twenty five percent of all the data. So where it's only small means it's um, bunched up closer, and where it's longer it means that data's spread out. So if there was, say, 100 pieces of data all together, 25 of them would be in each of those second sections. So 25%, 25%. And then, of 
course, if that's 25%, then in that box is 50 altogether. All right. So what we can also do on our box plot is we can put outliers, and as we've already discussed, outliers are things that are removed from the main part of the data. And so if we had an outlier, our outlier would be perhaps represented as a dot. So I'll have a look at a diagram there. Show them. Um, usually as a dot. So we might have something like this. up the end is our outline and in this case it would also be the maximum value and then where our whisker where it finishes here it finishes not at any random point but at the next highest That indicates that we've got all this data here and then a big gap to that outline. Right. Now, it'd be nice, how do we find these out, something that's an outlier, so in a mathematical way? Well, there is a, a recognised way of doing it that's accepted by statisticians that's used and it's creating what's known as a fence. So to find them mathematically, So an upper fence, so we use what's known as an upper fence, and the upper fence is the third quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And so the upper fence, what that tells us is that we need to look to see whether these numbers are bigger than that. So, any numbers bigger, uh, outliers. And the other end, so that's up this end, down the other end, it's what's called the lower fence. coming down from that lower quartile, Q1, down that way, it's Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. <clears throat> and then any numbers smaller at outliers. Diagram, but I 
want to squeeze it down in there. <clears throat> So if I was to draw something on a box plot like that, is our interquartile range, and then we would have a spot where our fence is. That spot there, that might be our upper fence. Do you have to put that in? Do you have to show that? No, you don't have to show that. Don't, wouldn't have to show it, but this distance in there is the Q3 plus, 1.5 times your interquartile range, and so up here, we've got anything up here, however many, there could be more than one, so up here, these things are outliers. Down the other end, we have another our lower fence. But you work out the intercortile range and all of that with everything, don't you? Yes. Yes, you work out the intercortile range and everything with all your data. And it's only when you come to drawing your box plot that you do it like this, yeah. Alright, so then this distance here. That's your Q1 minus your 1.5 times your interquartile range. And then anything that's down here is an outlier. So this example is from the stem plot from the previous lesson. The previous example. That was that one where we had our years. This one. Redraw it. So that's the data we used the other day. So previously we found that Q1 was, that's the one I made a mistake in, so I'm going to go back and make sure I get the right stuff here. 66. Our um, median. Uh, 73 and our third quartile um, was 75. Alright, so part A here is to uh, find the upper and lower fence, or the lower fence, to this one. And 
then part B would draw a box, box pop. So I guess in this question here, you're only being asked to find the lower fence because if the if there's our median, the upper end here, there's not too much distance between 73 and 77. They're pretty close together, but down the other end, it's spread all the way down to 52. So you probably expect that there's going to be outlier or outliers down down this end. So the question is, how, how many of these? here are outliers, and that's what the lower fence is going to uh, help us figure out. Alright, so our lower fence is this line here, and that's our lower quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And so our interquartile range Seventy-five minus sixty-six, which would be uh, what's that? Nine. So our lower fence is Q one minus one point five times the interquartile range. Q one is sixty-six. 1.5 times 9. When you stick that in your calculator, you get 53.5. No. Yes. Got that wrong. So 53.5 is our lower fence. So anything smaller than 53.5 would be a uh, outlier and when we come over here and we see 52 is lower than that so 50, sorry 52.5 made a mistake there with that one too we're going to fix that up right, so anything lower than 52.5 is an outlier our lowest is 52, so it's only just an outlier, but according to this mathematical model that we're using, 52 would be an outlier. So when I draw the graph, which I'll draw up here, we would have something like this. Might start off at 50. coming down this way and our whisker stops at our next lowest so if this is our outlier 52 our next lowest is 55 which is there so our whisker goes down to there all right so that point there where the whisker stops is this 55 
Now, when we look at the box plot, and this one in particular, you can see the median in the middle, and there's not much up here, and there's a lot down this way. So this kind of suggests some skew as well, which it in fact does. So this, because it's stretched down here, big tail down towards the negatives, this one would be a negative skew. So uh, I'll just draw some comparisons, diagrams, some comparisons between box plots and histograms relating um, symmetry and skew. And then that's it for today. So if something it's going to be symmetric, then our histogram is going to look something like this. And then our box plot. This would be in that bigger bit. Q1 and 3 would be there somewhere. And then there's our ends. So it's symmetric. Looks good, good plot. So this one may be a little bit longer, but probably not significant enough for it to be skewed. Um, a positive skew. Means we'd have a tail up towards the positive end. So our histogram will look something like this. Histogram that is, but anyway. Histogram might look something like this. Now the box plot, the line for the median in the box plot Normally something that's just going to have skew on this, the median's going to be around here somewhere. So in our box plot, that's where it will be. Probably a little part of the box that end, and a little whisk at that end. But down the other end, a bigger part of the box, and a bigger whisker. Negative skew, we like this one that we've looked at here. At the top. So our histogram builds up slightly one side. Oops. And then goes the other side. So it's generally just the reverse of that. So we have our median in the middle there, short bit of box and short whisker up the other end, and the other end, longer bit of box and a longer whisker. And outliers. Instagram, something like this. And for a box plot,
kecil. 